Are you thinking of buying the Sonos X soundbar? Do you want to know how it performs after more than two years of daily use? In this video, I will share with you my honest review and verdict on the Sonos Arc, the flagship soundbar from Sonos that promises immersive and cinematic audio. I will cover its features, strengths, weaknesses, and whether it's worth the price. Stay tuned to find out if the Sonos Arc is the right soundbar for you, and stick around to the end for some recommendations on some changes to the setup or alternatives you may want to consider. You'll find links in the description for everything I discuss in the video today. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. With that said, let's get into it. Hi, I'm David Loving, and you're watching Loving Tech Life. On this channel, I share my love of tech and gaming with tips, tutorials, and reviews based on my experiences. Welcome. For some background on why I chose the Sonos Arc, let me share what I had previously and the challenges with that setup. I got my Sonos Arc in January 2021, shortly after the release of the Xbox Series X and PS5. After choosing the LG CX OLED TV, the Arc was the final piece of my new home entertainment setup. Prior to this, I was using an old Logitech 5.1 surround system, which served me well over the years, and I still use it today with my retro gaming setup. However, with the new consoles on the horizon, I started planning to revamp my TV and sound system setup to be able to take advantage of all their new features. I also needed to simplify the setup so it looked better and was easier to use. The separate speakers in front and behind were a bit of a hassle to have wired up and looked a bit unsightly. And at one point I had three remote controls, all for a projector, TV, media player, and speakers. Just switching them all on was a bit of a juggle. All this amounted to was a system that was difficult for the family to use and looked a bit messy. At times, we also found it difficult to hear the dialogue of TV and movies, and it was continuously moving the volume up and down to be able to make the dialogue louder and make the explosions or music lower. With the new system, I wanted Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support, which eventually led me to the LG CX OLED and Sonos Arc combo. The Sonos Arc would provide a low footprint device that ticked all the boxes for sound and features while visually fitting in with our living space. I even went full stealth mode and chose the white instead of the black to have it blend in as much as possible. The Sonos Arc is a smart speaker soundbar that has 11 speakers that point in various directions in front to the side and up towards the ceiling to be able to support virtualized Dolby Atmos 3D surround sound. The setup for the bar was very straightforward. On the back, it has a single HDMI eARC port to connect with your TV, an ethernet port if you want to wire it to your network, as well as an optical port if you want to wire the sound in that way. However, it's best to use HDMI eARC or enhanced audio return channel if possible. In my case, I connected it to the power first and connected the eARC port of the Sonos Arc to the eARC port on the TV. This allows support for Dolby Atmos and the soundbar also acts as an extension of the TV seamlessly playing all the sound on the Arc instead of the TV speakers and the volume can be controlled with the TV remote. This meant we went from three remotes and down to a single remote. I no longer had to run a short course on how to use our setup every time my mother-in-law visited and wanted to watch TV. In this setup, I just have all media devices and games consoles connected to the TV's HDMI ports and everything plays through the Sonos Arc automatically. Once you have connected everything up, you complete this setup on the Sonos app from your phone. With regards to our typical use of the setup over the past couple of years, we watch terrestrial TV, stream TV shows and movies, watch physical Ultra HD Blu-rays, play games on the game consoles, and listen to music streamed from Spotify using both the Sonos app and AirPlay. Needless to say, the Sonos Arc definitely got a workout over the last two and a half years. First, I wanna talk about the pros of the Arc. The wife friendly factor. The Sonos Arc definitely met the wife friendly factor. Its sleek, unassuming looks help it blend into our living room setting to prevent upsetting my wife. I definitely appreciate that Sonos gives you the option for either black or white speakers across their range. It also perfectly integrated to the setup so that there's nothing my family has to do differently when turning on and watching TV or media. It simply plays all the sound through it and can be controlled with a TV remote to adjust the volume, which makes it mother-in-law proof too. Easy setup and integration. Setting up the Sonos Arc is straightforward. It connects to your TV via HDMI Arc or eARC 
and the Sonos app guides you through the setup process step by step. The arc sounds great across all kinds of media. When watching regular TV, which is mostly stereo, it provides a much clearer and fuller sound than the TV speakers can provide. When we're watching movies, listening to music, or playing video games, the ARC delivers clear dialogue, detailed audio, and a wide sound dispersion that fills the room. With multi-channel tracks like the multi-channel PCM 5.1 on the PS5, or Dolby Atmos on the Xbox, and streaming apps like Netflix Prime and Disney Plus, it adds another level of depth and separation to the audio. It also makes me appreciate the even higher bit rate of sound that the physical Ultra HD Blu-rays deliver. I also like how the Sonos Arc range supports a range of audio formats, PCM Stereo, Dolby Digital, DTS, and Dolby Atmos, to name a few. And you can see in the Sonos app exactly which one of these is currently being played. Home theater use is only half the story though. It's cool that when you're not watching TV, the Arc has other uses that we've gotten used to using every day. Pretty much every morning, we'll play music through either Sonos app or AirPlay, on both the Sonos Arc in one room and the Sonos Roam we have in another. I do prefer using the Sonos app because the speakers will play independently from my phone, which means if I leave the house, it keeps playing on the speakers as opposed to AirPlay that will disconnect as soon as the phone is not in range of the house. And if I want to watch a video or something that plays audio on my phone, it's not going to interrupt what's playing on the speakers like it does with AirPlay. The only time I use AirPlay is if I want to group the Apple HomePod mini into the multi-room audio. I think the Sonos ecosystem and user-friendly Sonos app are the Arc's secret weapon that many people overlook when looking at a home theater speaker setup in isolation. I must say the app itself provides a straightforward interface for managing music playback, adjusting settings, and even calibrating the soundbar's audio output based on the room's acoustics using TruePlay. Which reminds me, make sure you go through the process of tuning the sound for your room with the TruePlay feature. Since the Arc relies on speakers reflecting sound off the walls and ceiling to provide a bigger soundstage, TruePlay will adjust the sound to your specific room. Another feature we've really gotten used to is Amazon Alexa support. For a long time, I never activated it because I was trying to just stick with Siri and HomeKit support for smart devices in the house, but about a year ago, I finally decided to activate Alexa, which works on both the Arc and the Sonos Roam. This is great as it's given me another, sometimes even more convenient option to control the smart lights in the room, as well as controlling playing music from the Sonos speakers. My daughter used to always request that I play certain music tracks and I'd go into the app from my phone and play them for her. Now she can just go directly to Alexa and ask without waiting on me whether I have my phone on me or not. I must say I'm pretty impressed by how the mic picks up my voice even from further away in the room. Another big pro for me has been the continual support and improvement of the features of the Arc, as well as the options to expand the Arc home theater system with the Sonos ecosystem of speakers. Sonos have proven to me that they provide regular updates and support over many years with their products. Whether it's the new voice control features like the newer Sonos Voice Assistant with the dulcet tones of Giancarlo Esposito, that allows you to control the speaker's volume, group and ungroup, etc. Or the new options to enhance your home theater Atmos experience with the new ERA 300 speakers. Or the fact that they work to continually improve the sound of the Arc by improving the TruePlay feature. You can safely assume that the Arc will only have more features and capabilities from the moment that you buy it. If you're getting value from this video, please go ahead and smash the like button below. It helps my content be seen by more people and also lets me know if this is the type of content I should keep making. Okay, it's not all positives with no negatives. So what are some of the downsides to the Sonos Arc that you should consider? At face value, the Sonos Arc is expensive when compared to some other home theater setups. There are setups out there that are more bang for your buck for the same money, but there is always a trade-off somewhere and you get what you pay for. Sonos also seem to have a bit of a prejudice for Android users. You can download and use the Sonos app just fine, but for some reason, Sonos refuse to allow you to go through the TruePlay setup on an Android device. Why? 
There are workarounds, so if you have an iPad or know someone that owns an iPhone or an iPad, you could just use those for the 10 minutes it takes to run through play, but it does seem like an unneeded obstacle and a bit unfair to Android users. Last year, Sonos did manage to annoy many of its customers by making the true play worse and changing the sound profile for about three months. They did manage to fix the issues in the end with the 14.18 update, but it would have been good to have an option to keep the old profile. I've also seen some people complain about the lack of Bluetooth on the Sonos Arc. So if you wanna connect an Android phone to the Arc with Bluetooth to play music on it, you can't. As I mentioned previously, I personally prefer not to use AirPlay if I can help it anyway, so I don't really see this as a major drawback. Just use the Sonos app, which works great for all the streaming services out there. If you really want to use Bluetooth, you could pick up another Sonos Bluetooth speaker, such as the relatively inexpensive Roam portable smart speaker, the Move, the new ERA 100, or the Mighty ERA 300. Connect to one of those via Bluetooth, and from there, you can group them all together on the Sonos app since they're all on the same Wi-Fi network. I also want to address the elephant in the room and its name is Dolby Atmos. The Sonos Arc on its own provides a virtualized Dolby Atmos experience by relying on the sound reflecting off your walls and ceiling. Just for reference, a full Dolby Atmos home theater setup would have multiple speakers in front, behind and above your head to be able to provide the full 3D audio spatial audio experience. As good as the Sonos Arc sounds, ultimately it's a set of speakers that are positioned in front of you and this will limit the surround effect that can be achieved. In my setup, the right wall is really close to the speaker so it reflects really well. However, the left wall is much further away and has a dining table in the way of the wall. Even with true play, there's only so much that can be done. The height effects can also be hit or miss depending on the content because even movies can be poorly mixed, which makes things even worse. I also think that the fact that mine sits on such a low cabinet that it limits the effectiveness of the height effect. You can adjust the height setting in the app, but depending on your room and your setup, your mileage will vary. Don't get me wrong, the Arc sounds really good and has a wide soundstage, but I think the Atmos capabilities of the Arc on its own are oversold. I know that the ideal position of the bar is at the same height as your ears, when you're watching TV, but for me, it's just not practical at the moment. I think if you want the full Atmos experience, you need to expect that you will supplement the Arc with more speakers, but I'll talk more about that later. If you're into collecting physical Ultra HD Blu-rays, you'll find that some of those will have DTS-X audio tracks, which is the alternative to the Dolby Atmos 3D Spatial Sound Standard. While the Arc has added support for the older DTS surround sound, it does not support DTS-X. So this might be an issue for you. Another potential drawback of the Arc for you might be the fact that it has a single HDMI input, while other bars out there have multiple so that the devices can connect to the bar directly. The Sonos Arc is designed this way so that you can connect it to the HDMI eARC port of your TV to get the highest quality audio possible. This way you can connect all the rest of your devices to your TV or run apps from your TV and the Arc takes care of the sound for all of them. So if you've bought a TV within the last five years or so, there's a good chance that it supports eARC. If you have a TV that has the older ARC standard, you can still do the same thing. However, it will pass the older audio standards like Dolby Digital and compressed version of Dolby Atmos to the Sonos soundbar. So if you have a TV with HDMI ARC or no ARC at all, or it doesn't support Atmos pass-through, and you want to still get uncompressed audio and Dolby Atmos from your devices, you can buy a device like the HT Fury Arcana or even better, the Ori HDA935 that will go between the device and the TV. These are designed to provide you with HDMI eARC and split the HDMI signal between the TV and the Sonos Arc. This will solve the issue of not being able to connect the devices directly to the Sonos Arc, but it is one extra purchase you still have to make. The last thing you should be aware of is that there is no separate dedicated remote for the soundbar. Of course, I can use the controls on the top of the bar in a pinch, or the TV remote works to control the volume. Sonos expect most people to rely on the Sonos app and to control the arc from your phone. Personally, I see this as a big plus because I prefer to have the TV a bit louder than my wife, and I can sneak the volume up from the app without it showing on the screen that I've changed it. 
Okay, now that you've heard all the pros and cons of the Sonos Arc, I'll talk about how you could improve the Arc setup, as well as some alternatives to this that you could consider, and I'll wrap up with my final thoughts and verdict. One of the great things about investing in the Sonos Arc are the many options you have to further enhance your experience by being able to customize and upgrade your setup. With that in mind, adding the Sonos Sub Gen 3 would be my next upgrade. The Sub will take the low bass frequencies away from the Arc, and the Arc can then concentrate only on mids, highs, and dialogue channels for a much clearer overall sound. I personally would add the sub before adding the rear surrounds, both for the sound and the fact that I could more likely fit it into the space that we have. If you are looking to improve the surround experience, then you have more options for rear surround speakers, with One SLs or the newer ERA 100 being great options. These combined with the sub will take your home theater surround sound experience to another level. However, if you want to make the most of your Dolby Atmos 3D Spatial Audio Home Theater experience, we finally have an option with the Mighty Era 300s. These have six drivers to fire out sound in all directions, including the ability to fire upwards to accommodate the rear height channels. Sonos have long been criticized for the lack of upward firing drivers in the surround speaker options. Now, by all accounts, the Sonos Arc, Sub and Era 300 are the pinnacle of the Sonos Dolby Atmos home theater setup, providing an awesome 3D spatial audio effect. One thing I will call out is that you must remember to run True Play again after adding a Sub or surround speakers. The cost of the whole setup does start to add up, and so I'll mention a couple of options that in some ways might be better bang for the buck. The Samsung HWQ990C Q series soundbar is half of the price of the Sonos setup. It won't sound quite as good as the Sonos setup and it doesn't support 4K at 120 Hz VRR, which is important for gaming on consoles like PS5 and Xbox Series X. The previous version of this bar also had disconnection issues, so please do your research. But if you're just going for an Atmos home theater setup, this is a great option for the money. Similarly, the LG S95 QR 9.1.5 Dolby Atmos soundbar competes with the Sonos for Atmos sound at a great price, but it obviously can't do all the things that the Sonos setup can. As far as alternatives to the Sonos setup, what are your thoughts? Comment below with some alternatives you would recommend to the Sonos home theater setup. So what's the verdict after using the Sonos for the past couple of years and would I buy it today if I had to make the choice? The Sonos Arc has become part of my family's daily life. Whether it's playing music across multiple rooms, watching TV, movies, playing games, or controlling smart home devices, it has been at the center of our entertainment setup without missing a beat. I really appreciate how Sonos continually supports and provides updates and features to their lineup. The same can't be always said for other home theater brands that just move on to the next model or iteration on a yearly basis. For me, the pros all vastly outweigh the cons, as none of the cons of the Sonos Arc were an issue for me or my family. I like how the Arc is part of a larger ecosystem of speakers that can add sound throughout your home or enhance your home theater setup over time with upgrades. So if I had to do it all over again and buy one today, I absolutely would. You might have heard me mention the Sonos Room that we have as part of our multi-room audio setup. So if you're interested in learning more about it, please click or tap the screen and I'll see you in the next one.